ADHD, inattentive or hyperactive, why do the differences matter? The first thing that comes to mind when we think of ADHD is usually a little boy who can't sit still. But what often gets overlooked is the little girl who's just kind of quietly playing in her room daydreaming. Today we're going to talk about ADHD inattentive versus hyperactive. I'm Angela Howard and I am passionate about breaking the stigma of mental illness in the church. I'm here to help you live a more purposeful life in your relationship with God and with one another. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos. A lot of times when people comment, oh, I'm so ADD, they're talking about being forgetful or distracted. But we can all be like that. There's so much more to a diagnosis than just a few attributes. I'll leave a link in the notes below um, for the DSM-5 diagnostic criteria for ADHD. The best thing to do if you suspect that you or a loved one might have ADHD is to go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist who could administer an evaluation to help you determine whether or not that's accurate. When my husband and I were first married, oh, he could never sit still through a church service. He would get up and down like three or four times. And I was definitely thinking that he was just, I don't know, immature or whatever, but I was pretty judgmental. I had mastered the whole, you know, sigh that was loud enough so that he could know that I was being, you know, disapproving of his behavior, but quiet enough so that nobody else could hear. During that time, he also had probably a permanent bruise on his shin from me kicking him under the table because he was always kind of interrupting people in the middle of them saying something, or he would say something that would kind of embarrass me that I felt was inappropriate. And I just think that if I could have seen the diagnostic list for ADHD, then I would have recognized that he had seven of eight of the criteria for hyperactivity and impulsivity. Let me list a few of those for you. Often fidgets or taps hands or feet and squirms in seat, often leaves in situations where it's expected that they stay seated, blurts out answers before a question is um, completed, and an inner feeling of restlessness. My sister, on the other hand, um, was this peaceful and sweet child growing up. She loved to play and read in her room and was known as the family peacemaker. One of my most vivid memories of her as a child was that on Saturdays, it would take her the entire day to clean her room. She just seemed like she was in her own little world. We never thought that she had ADHD, but she was diagnosed with the inattentive type as an adult. Some of those symptoms are is easily distracted by other things or people, starts projects but gets easily sidetracked, has difficulty staying focused um, during lectures or lengthy reading or conversations, and often fails to give close attention to details or makes careless mistakes in different situations. Some people can even experience a combination of these types, like my son, Ben. You know, it's important to know these differences because you need to be able to target the symptoms when you're experiencing them in treatment. And also to simply just have a better understanding of yourself and those that you love so that you can both accept yourself and learn what works for you. You know, we are all uniquely created by God and we need to value one another. A perfect example of that is in Isaiah 64, 8. Yet you, Lord, are our father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do you see either inattentive or hyperactive symptoms in yourself or someone you love? I'd love for you to comment below. Please subscribe to more videos. I don't want you to miss out on any of the great tips and encouragement that I'll be sharing whether you yourself have a mental illness or have a loved one who does. I'll see you next time.